Hello everyone, welcome back to ECMATH. I hope you guys brought your warm hats and gloves. We are today going to the poles. Learn about polar coordinates. This is the first of what's going to be two videos. In this first video, we're just going to talk about the polar system and converting polar points. And in the second video, we'll talk about converting polar equations. So we're going to start by thinking about what we already know, which is the familiar coordinate system um, that you maybe have never heard the name for. But this coordinate system is actually called the Cartesian or sometimes just the rectangular coordinate system. Cartesian is after Rene Descartes. It's probably an accent somewhere. I'm not even going to try. Um, Famous philosopher, I think therefore I am, but also in addition to being a philosopher, was a mathematician and one of the mathematicians that came up with the idea of coordinates. And Rene Descartes came up with the idea of coordinates that were based on a rectangular grid, where every point on the rectangular grid had a unique representation. So this point that's in red here will only ever be written as 1, 2, as x, y. That's the only unique way to represent those points. This point over here might be written as negative 3, comma, positive 1, and it's the only way to write those points. We're really familiar with this coordinate system, but there are times when that coordinate system doesn't really work. I'll give you an example before we go into too fancy of territory. I'll give you an example. On a globe, think about a globe where you are right now. There you are. I see you. Well, the problem with the globe is that it's a circle. So if you think about the longitude lines going down, they're not really square. They're a little closer to a circle. And we actually define latitude and longitude based on this circle, and it sort of appears rectangular. If you look at a map, it's rectangular, but we know that maps actually distort reality. Um, and so a, uh, this is actually an example of spherical coordinates, but you could think about these as polar coordinates as well. Um, and that's probably where we get the name for one important piece of a polar coordinate grid. Okay, so what the heck are polar coordinates anyway? Well, it's not a 3D coordinate system. It's another two-dimensional coordinate system, and it looks like this. Um, there's any number of examples of polar graph paper on the internet. When I was in high school, uh, which wasn't that long ago, but I, my math teacher had to copy on her copier and give us all a single sheet of polar graph paper. And she said, save this. This is really hard to find. You'll never be able to find this again. And I saved it for 10 years, 15 years even. And at some point I realized, wait, I can just get this stuff online now. And so can you. So I'll post a number of these things to Classroom. Um, you can also just search polar graph paper, which is what I do. And there's a whole number of different representations of these, some in degrees, some in radians. Uh, this one's very detailed, which I find uh, pretty helpful. So let's take apart what the polar coordinate system is. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, you can see it's kind of like a rectangular grid. But instead of being on that rectangular you know, rectangle, well, it's kind of on a circular uh, setup. So let's take apart the pieces. The middle, we used to call that the origin, right? Like in, in uh, Cartesian coordinates, that was the origin. This is now going to be called the pole. And the x-axis, we, we still have an axis. We call the axis going from the pole out to zero, we call this the polar axis. Now notice we don't have to be like the polar x-axis or the polar y-axis. There is only one polar axis, which is pretty awesome. Um, and the polar axis kind of represents that idea of, of starting, like the, the axis is where you start. So then what we might do in this polar system is plot a point. I'm going to pick a point. I don't know, I'm just going to pick one right here. Now, instead of finding the x and y coordinates of this point, what instead we're going to find is the r and theta of that point. r stands for radius, and theta stands for angle. So how do I use this polar graph paper to read uh, the radius? Well, I start at the pole and I count rings. Each ring represents a distance of one unit. So this is the one ring. This is the two ring. This is the three ring. 
This is the four ring. This is the five ring. And this is the six ring. So just by counting out rings, I'm able to tell that for this point, the radius is six. Now, how do I measure the angle? Well, what I can kind of imagine is that from the pole, there is a ray connecting. Oh, I try to get that as close as I can. There we go. There's a ray connecting the pole to the point. And the angle is going to be the angle measured from the polar axis out to the ray that connects from the pole to the point. So that's how we're going to measure theta. And you can measure theta positive, negative. Um, it's, theta is measured in the standard way we measure angles. So that's part of why polar coordinates happen in the curriculum, the place they do. We've just done a ton of trig. So we know all about measuring angles in degree systems, radian systems, etc. Uh, now, I don't have to count anything to find this angle because I'm looking at my graph paper and I can see that the angle is pi over 3. But I could, of course, um, you know, do some, some calculations or I could count going around. It looks like uh, this axis, this is some pretty detailed polar graph paper. So this is the pi over 6s, which must mean these are pi over 12s, which I think actually means that each little line is pi over 24. Is that true? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, so it means that each quadrant is divided into 12. Not all polar graph paper is this detailed. Um, a lot of polar graph paper only has the standard unit circle angles. You'll see a lot of polar graph paper that's divided down to the pi over 12s. And the reason they do it that way is because that way you can include both the pi over 6s, the pi over 3s, and in the middle, it's not labeled on here, but the pi over 4s angles. So um, polar graph paper, you know, there's a lot of different kinds. Uh, it's just reading graphs around a circle, reading angles around a circle. And just for the sake of example, on that uh, graph I did before, I'm going to plot these three points. So these are points given in polar. So when I look at the uh, coordinates, I'm looking at an R and a theta, a radius and an angle from the uh, polar axis. So 3 comma 7 pi over 6. How am I going to plot that? Well, I like to find the angle first. So I go uh, 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, so I'm down in the third quadrant. And then on that line, you can kind of think about the entire line. Then what you do is count 1, 2, 3. And 3 comma 7 pi over 6 is going to live, I'm going to erase that line now, right here. We'll say 3 comma... 7 pi over 6. Let me kind of clean things up here. So that's how I would plot a point. First by finding the angle, and then uh, once I've identified the angle, I can count out to the radius. All right, the next angle is 4 comma pi over 2. So again, I'm going to find the angle first, and I know when you're doing x and y, you usually do x and then y, and it kind of feels backwards. That's something really common with polar. Uh, so I'm first going to locate the pi over 2. Well, maybe I'm going to highlight it. I think that would be nice. So here's the pi over 2 axis. You can go both directions if you want. And then it, the coordinate was 4, comma, pi over 2. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. It's not really that bad. Let's do one more. I know this one is a little bit weird. We have negative 3 and negative 5 pi over 4. Okay, let's actually talk about this before I plot it. Negative 5 pi over 4 just means that the angle opens clockwise. So that's how I'm going to draw the angle. So another way to, to write this angle would be uh, 3 pi over 4. That's okay. We're familiar with that. But what we're not familiar with is how the heck do you get negative 3? Well, I don't know. Let's think about um, the rectangular coordinate system. How do you get negative 2, comma, 1 versus 2, comma, 1? To do 2, comma, 1, you go 2 units to the right and 1 unit up. How do you do negative 2? You go 2 units the other way. 
So you can think about like the sine on a coordinate as not being an actual different number, it's a direction, it's a different direction. So when I see negative three, what I'm actually gonna do is count backwards, which I'll sketch it on here, the plan, I'm actually gonna count negative this way. So you can think about the direction of the angle, you know, facing the uh, ray of the angle as positive, and facing away from the ray of the angle as negative. And it's almost like we have a standard x-axis where we go positive, negative, but that axis is able to spin. So the positive and negative relationship is uh, you know, changing as you go around. Okay, so we're doing negative three, negative five, pi over four. So here on this graph, the pi over fours aren't labeled, but I already thought this out. This is gonna be negative five pi over four right here in the middle. So I'll highlight this axis all the way down. We'll do it in red. I'll highlight this axis all the way down, and I'm gonna continue through the pole. Now this is actually really difficult graph paper to do that, there it is, because it kind of cuts out in the middle, but I'm gonna continue that axis through the pole, and I'm gonna say, hey, on this axis of the angle five pi over four, there's kind of like an arrow pointing this way, almost like a compass needle. And so the arrow's pointing this way, this is the positive direction, and this is the negative direction. Ah, okay. So now if I'm going to go to the value negative 3, I'm going to count towards the negative. 1, 2, 3. So the point right here is what I would call negative 3, comma, negative 5 pi over 4. And that's how you deal in coordinate, polar coordinates with a negative angle, rotate the other direction, and a negative radius, travel the opposite direction that the angle is pointing. So I told you before that rectangular points are uniquely determined. That is, there's only one way to get to the point two comma one. You go over two and up one. I guess you could go up one and over two, but that's really the same thing. On the other hand, polar points are not uniquely determined. There are many different representations of every single polar point that you could draw. Um, we already kind of hinted on one with the point negative three comma negative five pi over four because we observed that the angle negative five pi over four could more appropriately be named three pi over four. So this point, without changing the radius at all, could also be represented as negative three comma 3 pi over 4. And that's the first way that you can find an alternate representation of a polar point is by uh, finding, make a little list, finding coterminals to the angles. And the reminder of how you do that, you can add or subtract 2 pi any number of times. So I'll say add or subtract 2 pi n. Um, you know, you can add or subtract 2 pi five times, you get another angle that's in the same place on the coordinate plane, so it's going to give you the same polar point. We can do that for any of these three. In fact, you know, I'll do, I'll do one for each, so 7 pi over 6. I could write this as 3 comma, um, what's 7 plus 12? 19 pi over six if I wanted to, right? So that'd be kind of like going around, moving your arrow around twice before counting to your radius. Four comma pi over two. I could go for a negative angle instead and say, hey, maybe this is actually four comma negative three pi over two. I took away two pi from that. Uh, and I could keep doing that for either of these. That's fine. Okay. But there's another way to find alternate representations and it has to do with the radius. So like not only is there a thing with the angles, but there's also something with the radius. Notice that negative three, like this is a negative, and we talked about what it means to be negative. Where did that point end up? That point ended up down here in the fourth quadrant, didn't it? And the ray, if you actually go to the graph, the ray that it was on was uh, negative pi over four, or I guess uh, seven pi over four, depending on how you count. So that could also be an angle that goes with that point, but, if that were our angle, we'd be facing positively this way as we count out. So instead of counting uh, negative one, negative two, negative three, we'd be counting one, two, 
3. So another representation of this point would be to change the radius ooh, to a positive radius of 3 and then change the angle to something like negative pi over 4. These three representations are of the exact same point. They mean the same thing. They're just different ways to get there. And then with the 3 and negative, five, negative pi over 4, you could also write that as 3 and 7 pi over 4. So you can change the radius, change the sign of the radius, find the new angle, and then you can still start finding coterminals. So there's a lot of different ways to alternately represent each polar point. I'm going to do that again for each of these. We'll just do one. So 7 pi over 6 was over here. So if I wanted to make the radius negative, I would have to go opposite to, we'll call that negative pi over 6. Right? 7 pi over 6 is, is uh, 180 degrees or pi radians apart from negative pi over 6. So another representation of this would be negative 3 comma negative pi over 6. Just think about sketching that point. You would first go to the negative pi over 6 angle, de kind of depress, you know, go that way, and then you would travel backwards. Even though uh, pi, negative pi over 6 in the fourth quadrant, you travel backwards into the second quadrant, uh, landing you at the correct location. 4 comma pi over 2. If I wanted to change the radius to negative 4, then I would have to imagine maybe pointing straight down and counting backwards negative 4 and so my angle would be uh, let's call this 3 pi over 2 so we'll actually kind of say hey 3 pi over 2 is that way so that'd be another alternate representation of that point so that's how you're gonna find alternate representations of polar points you can find coterminals or you can change the sign of the radius and adjust the angle. Uh, and specifically when you adjust the angle, you, add, you can add or subtract pi if you're in radians to it, right? Because it's always going to be exactly 180 degrees apart once you change the sign of the radius. When you're converting just single polar points, honestly, I think doing what I kind of did here and making just a sketch you know, look, sketch, 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 sketch. It's actually the best way to approach it. However, there are some conversion factors. So those of you that like equations, let's build some equations uh, for converting between these coordinate systems in general. And these are going to be sort of medium helpful for points and unbelievably helpful for equations. So we are going to, these are going to become really important uh, and they're, they're worth memorizing, or if you're not memorizing, at least learning how they're derived. So let's start here again. I'm, I'm going to pick a point. I'm going to pick one on the axis, but not on a nice axis. This looks like it's on one of these pi over 24s. And I'm just going to say that this point has coordinates r and theta. And I want to think about how I could convert from r and theta to x and y. And what I kind of did on this particular graph is I drew myself an x and a y axis. So you can imagine that that polar coordinate grid disappears and the same point stays there and now we're trying to count oh what's the x coordinate? What's the y coordinate? But I want my polar grid back. So let's get her back. All right. So how are we going to do this? Well we're doing trig so it's going to be the most helpful thing to do is going to be to draw a triangle. At this point, I kind of hope you're not surprised by this. Um, what's that triangle going to look like? It's going to look like that. All right, so we're going to draw a right triangle with the center at both the pole and the origin, right? So we kind of have both this idea that the center is a magical spot that's shared between everything. It's zero, zero in both systems. And then in the rectangular system, I have x and y of that point. So this point also has coordinates x comma y. In the polar system, 
I have theta, and I have the radius. But let's take this picture, I'm going to slide it over to the side, and do what we always do with triangles. It's a right triangle, so the first thing that seems really clear is that x squared plus y squared would have to equal r squared. And that's always going to be true. It might be worth checking. Will that be true if I check, pick a point over in, you know, the third, the second quadrant? Let's do the third quadrant. Pick a point over in the third quadrant. We have x, we have y, we have r. Yeah, it's still going to be true that x squared plus y squared is always equal to r squared. Okay. Uh, let's see. It would also be true, if I think about this triangle, that the tangent of theta would be opposite over adjacent, or y over x. So if I knew the y and x and I needed to find theta, I seems like I could just do a tangent ratio. And that's another conversion. Let's see. Let's also work a little bit on the... Uh, so I have things that can kind of solve for theta and r, but I wonder if I can get a conversion factor for x, like x equals something. Hmm. Well, let me look at this triangle. I notice that I have an opposite and a hypotenuse. So if I write sine, I'm going to do some scratch work. Sine of theta is y over r. Hey, that's familiar. We know that. We've, we've been doing this picture for months and months now. Um, if I multiply this by r, then I get the conversion factor y equals r sine theta. So it's really the, the familiar conversion factor that you, you've been doing for years. Um, just multiply by r to isolate y. And if I look at the same triangle, but look at x and r, then it would be true that cosine of theta is x over r, which means if I solve that for x, x would equal r cosine of theta. These right here are your four important conversion factors. Um, probably the these two on the bottom are actually the most important. Um, then the other two are also pretty useful, um, you know, for, for different things. So these are the important conversion factors. I would say if you are planning to go into calculus, you should memorize these. They're not really that hard to memorize. And you use them every time you're using polar coordinates. You use these all the time. So it's worth just learning them. So to close out today's video, I'll do a little example of how you can use these four conversion factors to convert polar points uh, to rectangular and vice versa. So here's our two examples. Um, and again, I actually think the best way to do this is just to make a dang darn picture when you're doing points. And it's more important to do this for equations. Um, but that's just me. A lot of you guys really like, uh, you know, having a formula to plug into. So if you like a formula, here you go. All right. So first we're converting uh, polar to rectangular. Okay. So polar to rectangular means that this is a polar value. 2 is the radius, and pi over 6 is the angle. All right. And I need what I need to convert it into eventually is x and y. Hmm. Well, what do I know? I know from over here that x and y are r sine theta and r cosine theta, respectively. And it looks like I know what r is. It's 2. And I know what theta is. It's pi over 6. So x is supposed to equal r cosine theta. Well, x, in this particular case, would equal 2 cosine pi over 6. And y, which equals r cosine theta, would have to equal 2, did I say cosine? I meant sine. Would have to equal 2 sine pi over 6. Okay, and then all you do is take your unit circle knowledge and evaluate it. Cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2 times 2. That's equal to root 3. And y is 2 sine pi over 6. That's 1 half times 2 is 1. So the coordinates of this point, x and y, would be root 3 comma 1. And that's how you convert from polar to rectangular if you know the radius and the angle. How do you convert from rectangular to polar? Well, you might be tempted to say, oh, those are very useful conversion factors. Let me use those again. Uh, so I got, uh, you know, uh, 
negative 2 root 3 equals r cosine theta. Problem is now you have uh, an r and a theta, and it's not as simple of an equation to solve because you have two missing things. So it's actually better to go back and use the things we know. Uh, we can, for example, use the x and y to find uh, r and to find theta. Let's find r first. So I know r squared is x squared plus y squared. So r squared is negative 2 root 3 squared plus 2 squared. So that's going to be 4 times 3 plus 4, which is uh, 12 plus 4 is 16. So r squared is 16, which means r is 4. Now, I'm not doing a plus or minus 4 here because the minus means like has a specific meaning in terms of a direction. So I'm just going to say the radius is 4 units out, and when I'll deal with a minus potential on the 4 when I uh, compute the angle. All right, and I know that tangent of theta is y over x, so I know tangent of theta is y over x, which is 2 over negative 2 root 3. Oh, that's kind of a mess. All right. So that would reduce down to negative, negative could go to the top, 2 over 2 could reduce to 1, so I have negative 1 over root 3. Now I can think about where in the world that would be. It's actually possibly in two quadrants, so this is opposite over adjacent. So it means I'm either in quadrant 3, or quadrant 4 with the theta. Um, but I also know something from the actual point, which is that this is a point over here in quadrant 2. So I'm probably looking at an angle here in quadrant 2, although the inverse tangent right, would actually tell me two different things. And what is this angle from the unit circle? I know that this is uh, 5 pi over 6. right? That's you know, familiar with the unit circle now. So one representation of this point, when I'm going rectangular to polar, could be radius 4 comma angle 5 pi over 6. Now if I wanted to get saucy to bring everything back together what I could also do is say yeah but you know another angle that has the same tangent is negative pi over 6. And so I could also give the angle uh, or point negative 4 comma negative pi over 6 and unless there was some rule in the problem that said oh only give positive radiuses both of those would be fine because they both refer to the same point uh, that's over in quadrant two. So that's how you use uh, polar coordinates to, or use the conversion factors to convert polar coordinates. Again, honestly, for points, I probably would have just sketched this out, not like that. Probably would have just sketched this out and said, um, my height is two, this is two root three, what kind of angle is this? And solve for this with the Pythagorean theorem. It's kind of the same thing, but, um, you know, I think that's slightly a better way, but the conversion factors really come from that picture anyway, so maybe it's easier for you. All right, folks, that's polar coordinates. Tune in for the next video where we are going to talk about converting polar equations. Polar equations are really cool. They're why we do polar coordinates. So if you were looking at this video saying, Mr. Eck, what is the point of all this? Tune in to the next one, uh, and I will see you there. Thanks very much. Have a nice day.